Every best gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no change nor shadow of alteration. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. The epistle for today, that from St. James the Apostle, the first bishop of Jerusalem, is drawing the attention of the reader, that is, of all of us, to the very vast difference there is between the gifts of God and the gifts of the world. The gifts of the world are neatly pointed out to be pride, vanity, and the concupiscence, along with their consequences of death and eternal punishment. The gifts of God, on the other hand, are life, grace, and virtue, whose consequence leads to eternal happiness. Not all the benefits of God are bestowed on us naturally, immediately, upon our birth, right? And by reason of our creation, they are dependent upon many different conditions. It is in the plan of God that we be cooperators with him in our salvation and in the salvation of others. So one of the conditions that he put upon us to receive his graces and his gifts is that we ask him, is that we pray to him. In asking for our daily help and those special needs that we have, not only do we obtain that beautiful help from God, but we also work towards giving him his honor and his glory. And we honor him truly as our Father, our Supreme Lord, and our Benefactor. We give honor to God by seeking his gifts and his benefits. And when we think about this and we contemplate this, we realize that our prayer must truly be humble and devout. You know, it really must be something. Our good God wants to help us a lot. I mean, if we just look at the gospel today, he explains the whole reason for his going up to heaven is that it's expedient for us. Not that he is going to, you know, anything else. It's nothing to do with him, but it's for us. It's expedient for you that I go. I'm going to help you. I'm going to send the paraclete to you. So it's important that we pray to our God who is always thinking of us and always wishing us to turn to him. Given this importance of prayer, it would probably be a good thing today just to kind of remind ourselves of what prayer is. Its definition, its its effectiveness, it's also its its five the five qualities that we should strive for, and also the five qualities we should strive for in our prayer. So before we begin, let us just lay a little bit of groundwork on the two ways that we obtain grace. The first is by the sacraments, and the second, of course, is by prayer. Grace is called a gift, a don, right? It is a supernatural aid from God owing to its free benevolence. That is, it is a gift that is not required in any way by justice. God gives it to us purely out of his good heart, out of his good will, because in no way does his grace correspond in any way with anything we've ever merited. We don't deserve any of his grace. He gives it freely. God bestows grace for no other motive than his sheer love for us. When we look at these helps, these graces that God gives us, we can divide them easily into two different categories. The first is actual grace, which is that helping grace from one event to a next. And then the other is habitual grace. And this is the sanctifying grace, the grace of justification. So often when we pray to God and we seek his help, We seek his grace either in temporal help, which again is actual grace, or to increase virtue within us, which is uh, sanctifying or habitual grace. So what is really prayer? And we all remember from our catechisms what prayer is. Prayer is the lifting up of our heart and mind to God, to adore him, to thank him for his benefits, and to ask him for his forgiveness, and to beg him for all the graces that we need for our body and soul. Prayer, being an elevation of the heart and mind to God, implies more than just the mere thought of God. It is chiefly an act of the will. It is the desire to act out in prayer. We can say that prayer falls into two different categories. We can say the first is mental prayer, which is made up of the mind, commonly referred to as meditation. And the second, probably more common to us, is vocal prayer, which expresses in words the thoughts of the mind and sentiments of the heart. Prayer is said either to be private, 
which is said or offered up by individuals in their own name or groups in their own name, and public if it is offered by the ministers of the church in the name of the church, most commonly called liturgy for the most part, right? Prayer is distinguished according to the manner in which the will pays this divine homage to our master. In the first place, when we acknowledge, we admire, and we adore God, such prayer is referred to as praise. If, with this divine praise, is added the expression of the submission to God, our author and last end, our prayer is adoration. And accordingly, if we thank God for his benefits or implore new ones in our prayers, our prayer is either referred to as thanksgiving or petition. It is by all these acts that God's sovereign majesty is honored, and therefore prayer is by its very nature an act of the virtue of religion. And so it is important for uh, for us to honor God by just asking him for things. Our God is absolutely amazing when you think of it. How many other people would think they were being praised and honored if they were asked for things? Our God loves this from us. He likes it when we turn to him. He likes it when we talk to him. To understand the, our prayers and the real value that they have, we need only to consider the great promises which are attached to them. God has made, God has made to everyone who prays, the great promises God has made to everybody that prays. Call upon me and I will save you from every danger, he tells us in the Psalms. And again in the Psalms he tells us, he shall, he shall cry to me and I will hear him. Cry to me, says the prophet Jeremiah, and I will hear thee. Whatever you ask, you shall, you shall ask whatever you will, our, teacher, our Savior teaches us, and it shall be done unto you. Ask whatever you wish, and it will be given to you. There are so many passages similar to this in both the Old and New Testaments that it is really rather amazing. Our God, by his nature, is goodness itself. And that's exactly what St. Leo the Great refers to God as, true goodness himself. God desires with a great desire to make us partakers of his own good. The more grace we receive and the more we cooperate with that grace, the more we become one in will and mind with God. And this is why the Holy Scriptures teach us, our Lord teaches us to pray and why he encourages us by the words which we read in the seventh chapter chapter of St. Matthew. Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Our Lord desires that we share in the good grace of God and become partakers in in the end in his sacred divinity. St. Bernard teaches us that when we pray, the Lord, if he does not give us the grace we ask, will give us a more useful gift. He says in one of his sermons, He will give either what we ask or what he knows to be more profitable to us. And God not only grants his grace instantly, but also abundantly, giving us always more than we pray for. His de- he delights, and truly delights, in enriching us with his graces. We should therefore pray with true confidence to our Lord that he hears us in all occasions, for he always hears us and always answers. The question and the problem usually is, How open are we to those answers and those responses? And therefore, St. Thomas says that there are five qualities that we should have if we wish to pray well. He says our prayer must be confident, it must be ordered, it must be suitable, devout, and it must be humble. It must be confident. For we read in the book of Hebrews, Let us therefore go with confidence to the throne of grace. St. James reminds us that It must not be lacking in faith, he says, but let him ask, not wavering. The second thing, our prayer must be suitable. We should ask God in prayer for what is good for us. St. John Damascene says, prayer is the asking of what is right and fitting from God. So many times our prayer is not heard because we seek that which is not good for us. Again, St. James reminds us, You ask and you do not receive, because you ask amiss. And indeed, to know what we should pray for, to know what we need, at times can be very difficult, can be most difficult. 
For it is not easy to know what one ought to desire. Those things which we seek in prayer are to be rightly desired. And so hence, the Apostle Paul tells us in his letter to the Romans, For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. It is therefore very important that we ask the Holy Ghost to pray for us and that we work through him. It is through the workings of the Holy Ghost in our prayer and our study that we may learn to pray as we ought. So to learn how to pray and to pray for what we ought begins simply by just praying and praying often. Our prayer also ought to be ordered so that our desires, in other words, our desires should be ordered. For prayer is nothing more than an expression to God of our desires. Now, it is the correct order that we prefer spiritual things to bodily things and heavenly things to material or earthly things. Thus it is written in the Gospel of Matthew, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his, the kingdom of God and his justice, and all these things shall be added unto you. Here our Lord shows us that heavenly things must be sought first before the material. And so often, I think, when we reflect in our prayer, we will notice that a vast majority of our time, unfortunately, is in the asking for things, in the asking of stuff. But first and foremost, we must remember our prayer should be an act of adoration to God. And we mustn't ever forget to be thankful as well. But we do need to also recall our prayers and our desires need to be ordered properly. Our prayer must also be devout because a rich measure of piety makes the sacrifice of prayer acceptable to God. This is the idea that is so often reflected in the book of Psalms, a real book of prayer, right? And we read so many times, In thy name I lift up my hands, let my soul be filled with the morrow and fatness, and similar type statements. These are all truly devout, and we realize our prayer must be, at times, extremely devout. Many times, because of the length of our prayers, our devotion does grow cool. Hence, our Lord taught us to avoid being wordy in prayer. When you pray, when you are praying, speak not much, we are told. And St. Augustine tells us that, let much talking be absent from your prayer, but as long as fervor continues, let prayer likewise go on. And finally, our prayer needs to be humble. It is recorded in Scripture that God hath regard for the prayer of the humble, and it is clearly seen, especially in the parable of the Pharisee and the publican in the Gospel of Luke. And then also we read in the words of Judith, The Lord, the prayer of the humble and the meek hath always pleased thee. If our prayer be as such, if it is confident, if it is ordered, if it is humble, if it is devout prayer, without a doubt it will be heard by God. Prayer is a duty which we all have and which we all owe to God. It is part of that adoration. God in his goodness gives us things as well. So we can ask him for things and he is kind enough to hear us. But primarily, let us remember, our prayer is an act of adoration. And we owe it to God. We should not excuse ourselves saying that we do not know how to pray. For really, what is prayer other than the co a conversation with God? We should neither say that we have not the time to pray, as it is difficult, as it is really not that difficult when we examine our day to find but a few moments here and there to elevate our heart and mind to God. So time often isn't that big of an issue. Nor should we find excuse in saying that God does not hear my prayers. For really, God is a kind father and is never, never deaf to the pleading of his children, so long as they are the prayers are good and properly made. We are told today in the epistle, every best gift, every perfect gift from above comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no change nor shadow of alteration. We need, we all need, we all have needs without a doubt, and we all should cooperate with God for his honor, glory, and salvation. Remember, the starting of prayer here, these simple little prayers that we began here, and as we grow in the spiritual life, our spiritual life will expand and these prayers will become bigger and better. And ultimately, they will end with that perfect communication, that perfect communion with God in heaven. These little prayers that we have here, they are but a start, God willing, to that last true 
final end, which is pure communication and true communion with God. So let us always pray well here, in true confidence, with devotion, and in a very humble manner, always asking and seeking those things of God, which are truly suitable and ordered towards our salvation and the salvation of others. May God bless you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.